Hello! Upgrade time, or follow-up time if you like. Do you remember my favourite little quad of the moment, which is the Aurora 100, now in its Fira 110 frame? And I said one of the reasons, you know, I struggled with the frame a bit because the skew didn't fit in it, but the reason I liked it is because it was wide here and I'd actually be able to fit in a proper Runcam Swift Micro. Uh, it's time to do that, so I'm going to get this camera fitted in there along with um, the VTX-03, I think it's called, the sort of standalone VTX that would normally come with the, the TX-03, one of those little all-in-one VTX cameras. Um, see if I can shove it in here and see if the picture is improved. So let's do that. I'll also, at the same time, because these original Aurora 100 props are apparently not as good as these Gemfan 2035s. I'll swap those out as well and we'll see if we can get a nicer flying experience. And here's the finished product. So how do we put it all in? Well, a bit of glue to be honest. I could have used one of the two holes on the side mounting plates but I've got a very limited amount of tilt there. So by doing this I've got you know a decent 30-ish degree angle by using the base plate and that is just glued onto the bottom section but I can still get to the screws to take the camera off if I need to. The VTX is lying on top, um, there's a piece of electrical tape underneath to act as a barrier against it touching the carbon and then there's just a little bit of glue just tagged at the sides just to hold that in with the uh, little linear held nicely in with um, another cable tie and of course we've got the Gemfan 2035s on. So really looking forward to flying this, see how it will go. Let's take it out for a test drive or fly. Well, it's three days later and I must confess to what I would call kind of reverse Midas touch. What happened is I got it ready, I took it out to the field, I took the lens cap off and the whole camera came with it. So as it turned out, using hot glue when you've got a shiny metal surface, well, yeah, shiny metal next to carbon which are both very smooth, there's not much to grip and the whole thing just came out again. So what I've got now is a little two millimeter screw and locking up through there and that's really tight that's not moving okay so on the same day I took it back to the field but I found when I took off I had this really weird light like the camera had gone weird now at first I thought oh when I'd um, put the camera back on maybe I caught something maybe I had a short it's happened like once or twice since and it's been a case of power recycling has gone away. So I'm starting to think maybe it's like a voltage spike when you first turn it on and it's uh, everything's powering up or something like that. I haven't got anything to prove that, it's just kind of a feeling. Um, I'll do some more investigation but yeah essentially I can get around it just by power cycling. But on that day um, I didn't know what was happening so once again I came home. So moving on to day two, took it out again. Um, camera was okay so took off, flew around, crashed it uh, into a tree on the very first LiPo. Uh, that wouldn't be so bad from the fact that one prop was missing and so were these two screws that hold it in, which I thought was odd. And then when I looked at the other one, I noticed that the screws were up, leading me to think that, uh-oh, I'd forgotten to actually screw them down again. Um, the rest of the props, by the way, were all bent up horribly, but these things just bend back. I mean, I'm guessing it's not as smooth now, but you don't have to change them, just bend them. <laughs> and they seem to last. The other thing about day two was um, the VTX had popped off, and I thought, I oh, know, I'd take the opportunity to, to put it on a bit better as it is now. But I had some sticky underneath it, and as I took that off, one of the tiny resistors under there came off and I had to spend a long time soldering back a little tiny thing just to get it in the right position to get it on. That flight, um, I got about a minute of footage and it looked pretty good but it was all sunny and um, you know most cameras work quite well in the sun so it's day three now and what I did early today is go out and I managed to fly all four batteries of this. Um, so let's take a look at that and see what happened now because it's not a nice day, it was a bit overcast and it's kind of the the time that the all-in-one cameras really struggle, the sort of murky conditions. 
So we'll start with the first LiPo I did, and this is when it was quite nice and sunny out, so it doesn't really give that much of a difference than any camera, well, really, aside from the fact if you point it into the sun, it doesn't go dark below, but pretty good conditions, this one. Uh, my only problem was maybe I was a bit rusty having like a week off or so, so I wasn't really flying that well, and obviously I crashed it, and... Here's the crash coming up now. It was basically just like I did a turn. I wasn't looking at my sideways thing and I looked up there. Now this went into the undergrowth and was so hard to find. All I was doing is following the beeper until suddenly the beeper went quiet and that's because I stood on it. Fortunately not hard enough to actually hurt it and it was uh, okay again. So let's move on to the next day when it was a little bit more overcast and let's get this thing in the air. Now, possibly because I'd had so much problems actually getting this thing flying, I was a little bit nervous flying, and it kind of shows that it's all not very flowy and it kind of just randomly going around. It is quite overcast out. The camera makes it look actually like it's quite nice conditions, but um, in a sort of regular micro camera, this would come out really quite grainy, so it's doing a great job here. Now I'm using the 2.1mm lens, and even though that's a pretty wide angle lens, it's nowhere near as wide as the normal all-in-one, and I can tell this by the amount of props I've got in the view, which has been quite reduced from what it is normally. Um, I've actually changed sight here, I'm doing a little tour, I, I have four lipos, four different places. This is pretty similar to the first one, just a, a bunch of random trees to kind of fly around and try and do stuff. Once again, LiPo 2, I was still nervous having crashed it here the day before and finding it quite difficult to find. I didn't really want to do that again. So it's still quite stilted flying, but you know, it's okay. You get an idea of how it handles the light conditions. You look up at the clouds uh, and it's light there, but it's not darkening, which is great. Here's Site 3 which is muddy, but at least I'm starting to loosen up a little bit, I feel here. So this flying was a little bit more fun and I got, you know, started actually doing some stuff and, and putting some moves together. Perhaps it's the case as well that I hadn't flown this one in this configuration at all. So it's still the case of really getting used to where the power is, how much you've got, you know, how fast it rolls, what sort of response you can expect. But yeah, at this stage, I was starting to really quite enjoy myself uh, and, and starting to just, you know, do some stuff and have a lot of fun. And I could have quite happily done a whole another bunch of batteries here. But I thought what I'd do is I'd go and try heading into the trees where it would be even darker. Don't know how well the GoPro will show it, but we're inside the woods now. And you can see the, the outside where it's quite overcast, looking very bright because the camera's uh, change the aperture so much but this is really dingy so this would be interesting to see how the camera does uh, it's all horrible on the ground but let's give it a go now typically what happens with this thing is the camera adjusts so that bit with the GoPro where I'm saying look at this it's all overcast and it's really quite dark in here it was but of course the GoPro tries and sorts itself out as much as possible but it was really murky in there and I was really impressed by the view I got from the camera. Uh, this is my sort of uh, initial first bit of the flight and there was this log to fly under and it was really funny because every time I approached what I thought was the right place to go I'd hit something. I hit that bit there and then I hit that bit there and <laughs> it was just really hard to do. Now I was looking at this and saying this is really good picture I'm I'm quite happy flying with this but I couldn't quite put my finger on why it was better it's obviously exposing more but everything looks a bit sharper and what I had there I had another quad to fly just in case I crashed the original one this was the fly 130 which itself I thought had a really good all-in-one VTX camera a, a little bit better than the normal ones so I put these side by side to try and get a feel for what was the difference and I could feel it instantly when I flew the flag that there was there was a difference in what we could see here and I think the clarity is because of the way it exposes whereas the fly egg camera will expose like the whole, the whole scene so it, it made trees sort of 
almost disappear. They, you couldn't get that discerning uh, sense of depth that you can on the run cam, where the run cam seems to be able to highlight all the trees. You can kind of tell when they're coming up. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not HD. You can still get these invisible branches come out and get you. But I thought it was a lot better for that reason. Now, I haven't gone into details about exactly how I hooked this up, but if there's anybody that's um, sort of wondering how it's done um, and how you do it, I've put a corresponding blog entry about this just to show the, the wiring for people that need to know that stuff. For for sort of, you know, people that have done a lot before, it's, it's pretty easy to work out. So I won't go on about it. I thought I'd try and get a few fly-throughs as well. And coming towards the camera, it's like blink and you'll miss it. It just blends into the background. It's much more fun going the other way where you can see the tail lights going on. I'd forgotten just how much fun going around trees and just being silly with it is. It's really good fun. And I haven't got any particular route I'm doing here. I'm just... There's, there's a main path through which I can pick up quite nicely on this camera and then I find a few trees to try and weave in and out and I try and keep track of where I am and that's about it really. Other than that I just try and go through stuff. Because there's quite a change of pace flying through the forest like this I find that uh, the lipo lasts quite a bit longer as well. There's areas where you'll go slower and not do as much. Of course it in, invariably ends in a crash as this one did but the lipo was just about out at that point anyway but no damage other than you know bent props which just bent back again so yeah i'm absolutely loving the little uh run cam micro swift on a micro quad i mean it sounds like it should go together doesn't it i mean the only problem is fitting these in these little micro quads in the first place a lot of them have a very tight narrow place to put them so uh, a bunch of quads may need some changes or maybe some little printed parts but I do notice on both the Banggood and Gearbest websites there's a couple of quads coming sub 100 or I think one was 105mm that actually have a micro uh, swift on it which is a major step forward. Um, it's really worth doing especially if you're living in a country like mine where from these days forward it's going to be quite murky and those little all-in-one cameras are going to struggle but yeah, I'm going to do some more flying with this and, and have a lot of fun with it. It's really opened up uh, where we had the dodgy conditions before. It's now not a problem. Cool. I will catch you next time. Bye for now.